Hey Leos, how y'all doing? Welcome. We're going to be doing your second half of September general reading here. Uh, before I get into the meditation, just a couple of quick announcements. Firstly, my how to be your own intuitive course is now available for registration. All of that information is over on my website, which is listed in the description box below. I would absolutely love to have you. It's going to be a really good time. Um, also, I now have a newsletter. Fancy that. I'm really loving doing them. I'll do a monthly animal energy, book recommendations, current obsessions from tarot decks to films to anything you can think of more than likely. So I would love, love, love to see you over there as well. Again, all of that info is over on my website, which is listed in the description box below. Please and thank you very much. Okay, on to your meditation. I heard Under Pressure by Queen and David Bowie. I saw a bunch of ants, right? Like the insect ants all working together and lining up. It was like this whole community of ants, like worker ants. And I saw this outline. Have you ever seen those outlines of Christmas trees? It was taking me to, to uh, winter time, interestingly enough. Have you ever seen those outlines of Christmas trees where it's constructed by wire or by pipe and it's like the shape of it, but it's all made of lights with like a star on the top. So it's an actual living Christmas tree, but it's something that's been constructed geometrically and usually is a group effort. It involves ladders and teamwork and, and lighting and electrical, you know, um, outlets and systems and all of that stuff. I saw you guys is sort of involved in that, that work effort, but it felt very organized and strategic. But I also saw that it's almost as if you are working on or for something that is going to benefit a group of people as opposed to, an, well, yes, on an individual basis as well, for sure. But it feels like something, because if you think about the Christmas tree like that I'm looking at, what I'm seeing is when they used to, or still do, I guess, um, when they light the Christmas tree, they light the star on the top of the Christmas tree in like a town center. Like where I was growing up, they used to have it downtown, where it's or Rockefeller Center here in New York, um, where they, they light the, the star and it's a big thing. They turn all the lights on and it's like, woohoo, it's a season. That's what I saw for you guys. But a lot of people far and wide benefit from that, whether it's the people watching on television or people from, you know, like some ways down the road that have shown up for that event can see the star and the tree. So I do feel like on one hand, it's a metaphor for you being, you know, symbolically, um, a beacon of light and hope for people around you or even people that are, um, you know, a little bit further away or distance, whether that's through social media or whatever have you, or influence or just energy, right? It's interesting. I feel like some of you guys are, are quite literally sending out blessings and healing energy for the world for some of you guys. And that's, it's like a part of your practice. It feels very generous. It feels like you are an energetic benefactor. It feels really nice. Um, but then I saw something very, <laughs> it's very interesting how this came through. So I saw the image of an actor. Um, his name is Ben Barnes. You may not know who he is, but you've probably seen a lot of stuff that he's been in. Um, he was Prince Caspian in the Narnia series. Um, he's on Westworld. Anyway, look him up, Ben Barnes. I saw an image of him. It's 3.33, by the way. I saw him on the timer. I saw an image of him getting back to work in London. He's from England. Yeah, I think he's from England. I saw him getting back to work after some sort of hiatus or, or finalizing something and then getting back at it and being in the, in the city center of London waiting to you know hail down a cab. I feel like there's this feeling of a certain energy of working diligently and then having that done and then jetting off. But it feels really, really positive. It feels like you, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really lovely, oh, yeah, benefactor, generous, you know, star of hope type of feeling here. You got the moth. I could talk about this all day. So this is air energy. But what I really love about the moth is that this represents healers and empaths. Empaths meaning that you feel other people's emotions as your own. Moths are highly sensitive. Even the lightest touch, and I would not recommend ever touching a moth. Please don't do that. Um, but even the lightest touch to a moth feels like full-on ten swords. Like, oh my God, that hurts, right? So they're just so highly sensitive. They miss nothing, right? You know, I'm really drawn to something here. So in the life cycle of the moth, particularly the cecropia moth, the North American cecropia moth, 
its life cycle is that the majority of its life is spent as the caterpillar, right? Just a walking cactus. And then it goes into the cocoon, it turns to goo, it comes out of the moth, and it only has like a two-week lifespan. And guess what its only job is during that two-week life, during the last two weeks of its life when it's in its full formation? It's to lay, it's to mate, right? And to lay eggs and leave that legacy behind. That's its job as the moth formation the last two weeks is to lay those eggs and leave behind the legacy to give birth to new life before it itself reaches the end of its life. That is stunning. That feels really pertinent for you guys right now. It really, really does. It feels like you are leaving behind something for others or that you are doing something that's going to have lasting long-term effects. For those of you who are in the business of helping others, healing others, intuitives, anything like that, because the moth for me, again, like I said, uh, being, I just saw 555 on timer. Um, being an empath is an intuitive ability, okay? It's a difference between being an empath and an HSP, which is a highly sensitive person. That has nothing to, well, I shouldn't say nothing. That's not an intuitive ability. Um, that's more of a, a characteristic or trait. But being an empath is like, you can pick up on things that, you know, other people do not say. <laughs> but also, I want to point out the light and the darkness. Remember I saw that image of the tree being lit, right? Darkness to light, beacon, that is really, really stunning there. Also, the fact that this is a lot of green here equates to the heart chakra. And it really does feel like you're coming from a very heart-centered place. It feels really nice. Oh, I love this so much. So you got the Queen of Wands. So here you are showing up as, you know, yourself as a fire sign in your feminine expressive form. So I really like this and this makes a lot of sense to me because we're talking about you being a benefactor and, and how it's final two weeks of life. The moth is only there to lay eggs and give birth before, you know, ending its life cycle. And then you have come up as the mother of your home suit being generous, giving to others, being there for others. This also speaks of, you know, first of all, I love the sunflowers here. I just, I absolutely love how this is depicting you guys right now. There is this energy here of protection as well because I associate lionesses with protection. So you could either be, you know, um, that protective energy for other people or other people towards you. But I also feel like there's a sense of like you are protecting it's going to sound funny, but it's almost as if you are protect. Remember when I said that I saw you kind of, uh, some of you sending out healing intentions for the world or sending out energetic healing for those you love or, or even saying a prayer, setting that intention. I feel like you are the protector of other people or you're really imbibing within that energy. It's really, really beautiful. You know, the queen of wands also speaks of a, of a sort of self-confidence and love of home where you come from, what your home means to you. It being a safe haven. Some of you guys could be stepping up into a more fully realized position within your communities as well or identifying with your communities in a way that maybe you didn't before or in a newfound way. But this is loving where you are. But again, I'm really drawn to this protective protection aspect. It could be that you have children, you're feeling that towards them or for humanity, whatever have you, but they're for clients too, but it's, oh my God, guys. Queen of Cups. Look at this Queen of Cups. I love that you're coming up in your feminine form. Okay. So I equate moth energy also to feminine form because, again, largely about the laying of the eggs and giving birth to new life, and it's about receiving. Empaths are receivers, right? So now you have the Queen of Cups, which is another receiver coming up again in your feminine form, right? receiving a lot of intuitive downloads. That's what the Queen of Cups does, honey. She gets those intuitive downloads. She feels incredibly deeply, deeply, and she represents what? Empaths. There's a lot of intuitive information coming your way. There is a lot of deep feeling here, but I'm also really drawn to the fact that this animal is equally comfortable underwater or above water, land and sea, land and sea. Something about that. I'm actually hearing the song Land and Sea or Land or Sea by um, Sleeping at Last. I'm hearing that song for you. Whoa, you are, God. The, the receptive feminine healing energy and the Gaia energy here is real, real. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. Okay. 
So we have the three of pentacles here. I really love this. Okay, so you see how the giraffe, you would never mistake the giraffe for any other animal. I'm like a buffalo or a bison or certain types of birds. And you go, oh, is that that or is it this? The giraffe, there's no mistaking a giraffe or a giraffe. It has that beautiful long neck and that very distinctive, you know, patterning and coloring. The three of pentacles traditionally is about you being compensated and recognized for the work that you do better than the rest or more or, or uniquely so. What work is specific and unique to your abilities, whether you've accrued them or you have them inherently, right? Also, there is an aspect of the giraffe for me that represents foresight. So there is something here about an eye to the future or being able to see into the future for some of you. Really working on that third eye aspect as well. I'm really trying to the fact that I saw the actor Ben Barnes. I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure why he's coming up like he is in this reading. I don't usually channel like random actors, but he's coming through. Um, there is this element here of, of setting yourself up in a certain way where you're in this receptive energy and then boom, it's going to flip to a masculine energy where you're doing and going and being. It's interesting how this is coming up. But work is looking very good. It, th there is this energy here of you being compensated and recognized for your particular gifts. And I have to say it again. I do feel like there is a group of you that I am tapping into. Oh man, these are two different... <laughs> Do you love it when the cards are all different directions and you're like, how did this happen? What are you trying to tell me? But, but there is a group of you guys that are healers or in energy work, something to do with that, intuitives, um, or artists. Artists, actually, because Ben Barnes is, a, is an artist. He's an actor, right? Something about that. But I'm also hearing to ask yourself, what is your particular art form? And it doesn't have to be traditional art. Like sometimes there are, you know, accountants that the way that they see and work with numbers is an art, even though it's not something you would go to a gallery to see or, you know, go to a movie theater to see, right? What is your particular art form? What does it say about you? What does it mean to you? How does it represent how you see the world? How are you leaving your piece of the world better than how you found it? as well. This is very cool. Okay. Queen of Wands. Ooh, someone wants to come out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nine of Pentacles. Accomplishment. Well, this should come as a surprise to no one. The Nine of Pentacles. This is, this is more work energy here for you guys, right? But this is that feeling of, of wow, I accomplished this right? I did this. And again, I saw those ants and, and ant is very much a working energy, but there is this feeling here of look how she's just like, she's like, yes, 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 yes. Everything is as I like it, as it's meant to be. I'm sitting under these pink skies. My people are taken care of. My loved ones are taken care of. I'm giving back, which feeds me, right? Because there is this feeling of being there for others is, is coming as a form of deep, gratification for you as well. But again, nine of pentacles, that is a beautiful work abundance. It's that feeling of independence. It's really knowing that you have everything you need inside of you, right? To quite literally make it work in whatever way that applies with and for you, right? But you're standing on your own two or four feet as it were at the moment. And it feels, it feels really strong. It feels empowered. Actually, you know, I'm picking up on a group of you guys that I would even go so far to describe you as empowered empaths, empowered empaths. You could also be in a place where you're empowering others. Like I said, it really feels that way to me. Mm -hmm. Queen of Cups. Whoa. Okay. Ooh, you have the sun on the bottom here, your energy here popping up. Okay, so we got some Scorpio energy going on here. Let's talk about it. So we have the tower here, right? Scorpio energy, and then we have the Queen of Cups, Scorpio being a water sign, known as being incredibly intuitive. So I'm feeling a lot of Scorpio energy here. Also, Scorpios are known to being very empathic and deep feelers, and then we have the empath energy with the moth. So I wanna talk about this. You know, the tower traditionally, it's what I call the universe being the great rearranger that it is, coming in and really changing things up when you've gone a little askew off of your path, right? 
Now, here's the thing with the Queen of Cups and the Tower. It is very clear that you are feeling things very deeply. It feels very clear that you are very tapped into your intuition, but I want to bring something up. Remember when I saw that image of, of working on the Christmas tree and it going from one state of being and then suddenly you're in central London hailing a cab and it's go, 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 go. There's this aspect here of stillness moving into high action. But I also feel quite literally what I want to say about this, some of you guys are in for quite an upgrade when it comes to your intuitive abilities. I, okay. I want to say a word of loving caution around that, especially with this empath energy and everything else. If you feel, especially because we're underwater here with the tower, right? Self-care is highly important. Okay, self-care is highly important. But especially as you start feeling things more, I saw that foresight, some of you guys working on the third eye chakra or it just opening spontaneously, right? It, allow yourself some TLC within these energies that you take in. And also, you know, think about are the feelings that you're feeling your own or are you picking up on others as well? Are you picking up on feelings of the collective, right? There's something about this. There's just this word of loving caution about, you know, to caution against feeling too overwhelmed. If you need to go back inside your cocoon from time to time, then do that you'll be able to reemerge, able to be there for others even more so, but you can't fill from an empty cup. And it really feels like allowing yourself the TLC and the time that you need um, is highly important. Again, transformation here. That's what we're talking about. This is about the transformation that you're going through and how to do so in a way that is not just effective, but also healthy, right? Constructive and nurturing. Three of Pentacles. Ooh. Okay. The star. The star on the top of the Christmas tree. I'm obsessed with this. Listen. You have the star and then you have the three of Pentacles with the stars here. Listen, uh, uh, traditionally speaking, this is Aquarius energy here. This is great hope, great love, spiritual insights, intuitive abilities. Some of you guys are in intuitive work. I'm telling you that right now. But also, there is an aspect of wish fulfillment to this key as well around the work that you do. Or even who you are as a person. What about you is specific to you that, that okay, this is kind of morbid, but I'm, I'm going to go there because I'm feeling the Scorpio energy anyway. I'm getting a message to think about what your eulogy would say. Again, with this moth passing away too at the end of its cycle. Like, if you were to die tomorrow, what would your eulogy say about you? Being really honest about that and allowing that to inform where you are and where you go next, okay? There's a quick change that wants to happen within at least how you relate to yourself in the world, the work that you do, how you do your work, in what way you do your work, your relationship to your work, your interpersonal relationships, where you live, your community. It feels all-encompassing like that. It does. It feels all-encompassing like that. And you're being asked to ask yourself these big questions, right? But it feels like the product of you doing so is going to result in such illumination and great love and power and healing with and for yourself and also for the others in your direct atmosphere, but also by extension. I also want to point out the fact that I was talking about the light and the dark and the inside the cocoon and coming out into the light. And then we have the stars, the illumination and the darkness and the unknown as well with the star key here. But I'm also hearing a specific message because Aquarians are, knowing, are, are known for being like the aliens of the Zodiac. A bit weird, a bit strange, a bit different. I can say that because I am one, right? And then we were talking about the giraffe with the long neck and the being unique. What about you is unique to you and how can you embrace that more? How can you use your unique, unique abilities to inform or enhance what you do or want to do? Right? That's the question. Yep, I want to get a bird. Let's get a bird oracle from my Leos here. Mm. Man, when you have Scorpio and Aquarius energy working with a Voya, I'm getting a special message about a marriage between the heart and the head as well. 
really lovely though. It feels like a significant period in time for you, Leos. All right. Ooh. <gasps> oh my God, it's so good. Cardinal, stand tall and proud. See the leadership role unfolding ahead for you. Are we not talking about you being a beacon, a leader, a source of sustenance, inspiration, and support for a network of people? I'm obsessed with this. Stand tall and proud. See the leadership role unfolding ahead of you. This is, I, this is exactly what we've been talking about this whole time. And look at how stunning that is. Boop, 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 boop. Leo, this was your second half of a September general reading. I just, like, look at how stunning. I, I love this. I'm actually getting a last message that for some of you might actually be seeing cardinals. Oh my God, I almost missed that. Cardinals come out in the winter time and are associated with the winter solstice or Christmas or that time of year. Okay. There's something about that time of year for you guys too. I'm hearing it. Wait a minute. Oh, that's really weird. Scorpio season... In between Scorpio season and Aquarius season, right? Which would be what? Like October 22nd is around when Scorpio season starts, if not on the day. October 22nd to the end, uh, to about February 22nd or so. That is a very pertinent time frame for you. October 22nd, around there, to February 22nd. Whoa, that was very specific, but I'm obsessed with that. Okay, Leos, this is your second half of September general reading here. I so hope that this helped and resonated with you. If so, please do let me know in the comments below. I just live and love for reading your comments. And with that being said, just thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of y'all for being here and for watching. And as always, thank you for being you. And be well. Until next time.